welcome to another video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to turn a skein of yarn into a cake of yarn. You may, may also call this a hank of yarn but it's just a twisted up piece of yarn that it's normally hand dyed yarn that's like that and we're going to show you how to put it into a cake. You can do this on the back of a chair but I have a swift so I'm going to show you how to use one of those. So let's get started on the lesson. This is the contraption that turns our skein into a cake of yarn and it's um, made all in here. That's your yarn feeder. That is where the cake gets made on there. This is to tighten the clamp to the desk and then this is your handle that you turn which makes the yarn winder spin around. So it is clamped to the desk. I just have some um, non-slip stuff that goes under mats just to protect the table because this isn't a square edge table it kind of like it falls off if I try and clamp it without this so I've just folded that just so that it stays on when I'm winding it so that is our yarn winder and over here I've got a few skeins that I need to do today I've got to do four in total I think yes four in total but I will need a few more for the project I want to do so you're gonna need a pair of scissors you can see I've already attacked one of the skeins of yarn. And again, this tea towel and this rubber mat is just to help it stay on the desk. This does have a clamp at the front, but for some reason, because this table is rounded edges, it won't stay on the table properly. It rocks backwards and forwards, so I've got a G-clamp. Let me just set that up for me. That there is just in case this G-clamp falls off. I don't want to smash a tile. So this is my skein winder. Let me just back up a bit. Hoping that shows against that background. And it's also just past Christmas. <laughs> Ignore my amount of tinsel. For some reason I thought that 4 metres of tinsel would be big enough for a 7 foot tree. I can tell you now it's not. So this is the skein winder. This is an Ashford, I think it's called a Skeiner 2. I'll put a link in the description box if you're interested. Uh, I bought this in New Zealand when I lived there. But I know you can get them in Australia and I'm pretty sure you can get Ashford products worldwide. So this is a handle if you want to manually wind yarn onto the skeiner, which you can do. And it also has these adjustable, these um, turn to adjust, loosen up, and you can slot them into the slots or just tighten it up to there. This is set up, I just did one already, so I know that's set up for the size of the skeiner yarn. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get our skeiner yarn, which is here. And we're going to unwind it. We do want to do a couple of things and make sure on a few things as well because if we, if we do this wrong it can end up in a big big mess. Trust me I've been there and I've done it many times. Excuse how I'm dressed this is just casual home clothes. <laughs> so we have our skein of yarn this is a it's a Malabrigo and it's called Glitter number 48. It's lovely yarn it's a worsted weight but I th personally think it's more like a DK. This, I don't know if this is showing up proper colour on the screen, but it's a lovely golden autumn colour. So it comes in this skein, which I will call a skein, but you may call a hank, whatever it is, it looks the same. And they're twisted because they're usually hand dyed yarn. So what you want to do, there's like a knot, not a typical knot, but a kind of knot looking thing at the top. And then down the bottom, it'll be like a twist. So we're just going to pull that undone. And if you can, just keep your fingers in that loop that's there and just let it untwist. And you'll see here that there's all these threads going everywhere. What we want to make sure is that all the threads are going in the same direction in a big loop. So they should all be going in that same direction that you can see in that big loop. So I may just need to put my fingers underneath those loops. I'll just take your hand out and put it back in. So most of them, they should have these yarn ties, which you can see coming across here. We've got yarn ties. This one I think has got two or three. So there's one there, there's one there, one there. I've got four all together and there's one over there as well. You can see the yarn going across. So what we're going to do, we're going to pick one of those. Um, sometimes the yarns are quite skinny that ties the yarn together. They just use a piece of scrap yarn. So I'll choose a thicker one so it's easier for us to see. You can see going across here. 
this is just what they've used to tie it up so that all these strands don't go messy in, in the skein when it's traveling or when it's in the shop or whatever. Or, and also when you undo it. So we're gonna look at this on both sides and we're gonna make sure that none of the main strands that go this way are crossing over that loop. Now, they are nowhere there that I can see, let me have a look, nope. Nowhere there that I can see is crossing over the yarn. I'm going to cross it over so you know what it looks like. So see on a middle one there, these yarns are crossing over the main strand, sorry, the, the tie that goes that way. See how they're crossing over like that. If you put it on your skein wind winder like that, or on the back of a chair or anywhere you wanna unwind it, you are gonna end up with a huge, huge mess. It's gonna get knotted. Trust me, been there, done that. If it's on a skein winder, it's even harder to get undone. If it's on the back of a chair, it may not be as hard, but it's still a pain. It's an absolute pain. So what you wanna do is, like I said, look at these strands going across here, or down, and get those where they should be. So these two should be over that side. See how they've, they're not crossing over there, so before they were like that. And then they should be over there, like that. So you can see the ties that have been used. You wanna see them all. And what you wanna do is just gradually work your way around to the back. You're gonna have a look. Are there any crossed over? No, there's not, because I've already undone them. You'll see like a little bit here, but that's just the thread from the other side that's keeping these strands in the same place. That's not a crossover. Um, sometimes you'll get some on the side here, which you won't notice until you get your knots and then you'll think, well, I must have had a crossover. So you're just going to, so there'll be one here. See just there, there's like, it looks like maybe a crossover. That's not a crossover. That's just where the, the two strands, let's see if I can do this. The two strands of yarn are just, they're crossed over, but it's the, it's the tie that they've used to tie up the yarn there. Okay, so once we have it all done, you can check in a couple of spots, just to double check. Make sure, trust me, this couple of minutes doing this is worth not getting that headache. Because basically you have to do like yarn gymnastics and no one gets a gold medal when you try and do it because it's really hard to do. All right, so we've got our yarn like this. It is all untwisted. It's all going in the same direction in the loop. So what we need to do now is put it onto our skein winder. So it's still in our continuous loop and we're just going to put on our skein winder. This piece of yarn, I don't know if you can see that or if you saw it before, it's just to stop it sliding off. These um, little these little arms that come off the actual winder that keep your yarn on, they're quite smooth and I found that some of my yarn sliding off. I did have four of these but gradually they've disappeared. But that's just that all that is in case you're wondering. So we're just going to put it on and put it over to that one. You'll see here that that it's not going to go to there. So what we can do is I can untwist the little thingies at the back and then tighten them up. Looks like this one here may have moved by itself, I think. Because that should not be all the way out there. So you don't want it tight, so you see I'm pulling that tight, it still won't reach there, so we want to pull them in just slightly. You don't need to do it to all of them, just one or two will do. So you want a bit of tension, you'll see how I put that on there, I didn't really stretch it, but it did have a little bit of tension, ready? So it's not really tight, but you do want a little bit of tension so that it, it hugs the skein winder and doesn't just fall off. That's not twisted. And when it goes onto the skein winder, you're going to see if you can get all the yarns going in the same direction. See how, don't worry about that little piece there, that'll be fine. 
see how they're kind of like all twisted but they're still reasonably straight that's what you want what you don't want is like if I can twist this over this is really hard to do one-handed see how that's twisted there you don't want that because it'll just make unwinding your yarn even harder so you can see that it's not not too bad you'll have a little bits here and there but it's pretty good okay so now what we want to do is we're going to undo these ties some of them will undo reasonably easy others you'll just need to chop them off so some will just pull depends on who the yarn dyer is or anything like that some of them are really easy to get off of course one handed isn't the best but this one was sort of just tied up in a bow and that'll come off quite easy this one the one that's in the bow generally is the one that's the start and the beginning start and the beginning that's the same thing the beginning and the end of your project zoom you out there of your project so these ones will this one here especially will be attached to our to our yarn the other ones won't be come around this side you can see we can just sort of pull those out and see how these two that's still attached to the yarn skein you've got that one and one come down here whichever one is closest to the outside that's the one you're going to put to your skein your ball winder which is over there down the other end of the table see this one that looks like it's on the inside of the skein which is which should be how it's going to work and then one which is this one is closer to the outside let's come on this side and find it should be easy to pull out yeah there we go so now what we want to do is just to undo these ties Malabrigo always um, ties them like this so I know I can just chop near the knot you could try and undo it if you want to but I ain't got time for that I just chop the bits off so I'm going to just chop the bits off and then we'll go to the next step So I'm just chopping off where that little knot was at the end and it should just pull out. So I'm just grabbing the end of the piece of yarn that I've just cut. This is just the ties, not the main piece of the yarn. So you should be able to just grab it, put a bit of a shape and it will just come out. I don't know if you can see that, but it will just come out. So make sure you've got all your ties done, otherwise it makes Getting your yarn off your skin wider a lot harder. <laughs> You'll know if you haven't done the wall. So just spin it around, make sure you've got all your tyres, and that looks good. So the piece of yarn is on the outside, which for me is just here. We are going to pull this out so we've got enough yarn to go over to our ball winder. So I'm hoping you can see this in the video, but you've got your skein winder here and you've got your yarn, got a long piece of yarn and it's going to go over to your ball winder. All ball winders might have a different uh, yarn feeder. You can just feed it straight through if you want, but I know if I go underneath the loop and then go around the back, that it goes through. Like I said, you can feed it straight through the hole. So I'm going to get my piece of yarn and in my ball winder, like I said, they could be all slightly different. There's a slit at the top and that's where you put your yarn. So I just get, I don't know, two or three inches and just slot it into the slit that's at the top. That's probably not showing up very well on camera because of the angle, but you can see there's a piece. And what it does is just holds the yarn in place whilst you wind it. And this little piece here can create a center pull ball. So if you leave a little bit of a tail, then it, it makes the center pull ball really easy. So basically we're going to turn this handle. You can turn it any way you like, but just continue turning it in the same direction. I like to hold onto my yarn, not 
tight just to really guide it so that if on the other end where the skein winder is if that jams or if it goes loose the yarn feeding into your ball winder is not going to go really tight or really loose and affect the, the cake of your yarn if it does that you, you will have to just wind it up again like you can wind your cake and then rewind the cake after to make it to make it more even so we're just going to turn our handle and it will feed well it will feed the yarn onto the ball winder and you can't see it but the skein winder is turning around you can go as fast as you want i do go a little bit faster than this but it's the first time i've used this table it's not very good for this yarn winder because it's got a rounded rounded edge rather than a straight edge if i go too fast the um the ball winder falls off So as you're winding, you want to look at your ball winder to make sure none of these threads are going underneath. If you go underneath this little disc, you're going to end up in a world of pain. It's going to get um, knotted up. So that's why you want to keep the tension of this yarn pretty much the same the whole way through. Don't panic. Don't think it's going to be perfect. Just It's got to just feed in with some tension so that it doesn't go loose. If you've used a ball winder before, put a, put your horror stories in the just in the comment section below. I know there's going to be some. I've had to cut yarn out of the bottom. The, I don't know if you can see the mechanisms on the bottom of this ball winder, but I've had to cut yarn out of there. I've completely wrecked, you know, a fairly expensive ball of yarn. And these, but these ball winders will work on. This is, I think. 100% wool, but you can use them on acrylic, you can use them on anything really. So this skein, uh, this ball winder, sorry, is good for about 100 grams, which is about 3.5 ounces. You can get bigger ones, and I'm going to put a link in the description box uh, to where I got my bigger one. I'm pretty sure I got it on Amazon, but the big one's great. But I generally only use 100 gram skeins. So I don't use the bigger one too much, but if you use more than 100 grams or more than 3.5 ounces of yarn at a time, then the bigger ones are great. When sometimes you have a ball of yarn and it's all collapsed and it's getting knotted, you can use your ball winder to wind up that leftover yarn and it stores really good. Try not to store your yarn too long in a cake too long in a cake because it can stretch your yarn and then it just wrecks it so really only cake it up as you need it see how this is falling off we're filming a video tutorial you cannot fall off the table the only thing that will be good for is a blooper reel i can see it moving gradually off the table i'm just about finished this game this ball Okay, so we've come to the end and you have this piece of yarn that's the end. What I do is I just leave it and then for now, I just leave it for now and then the bit that's in the middle that's on the little slit that you probably can't see. Can you see that now? I don't know if you can. But the bit, piece of yarn that's across the slit here that, that I've got, you may have different setup. You're going to grab that and just pull it out and just find the end. Should, there we go. It should just pull out really easy. So I just wrap that around just to keep it there, but hang on to it because when we pull this off, the middle might suck it in. If you use from the outside of the cake, then that's probably not, not a problem. You probably could just stuff it straight in. Um, I generally use from the outside now because it, it doesn't collapse the ball, the cake of yarn. You just gently put your fingers underneath and just gently work it off the cake. Off the cake? off the pore winder and you've got your center pull and then you've got this outside piece of yarn you can leave it like that if you want but what I do is I just get my this is the end on the outside 
This is really hard to work in front of the camera. <laughs> it's much easier from behind. So I'm just going to tuck it in. Tuck it in under one of those strands there. Just poke it in. That'll do. Oh, look, how, look at the pretties. Zizi, if you're watching, oh, baby, there go. I love this stuff. It's so soft. Okay, so I have two now. Two now worked up. Aren't they gorgeous? This one here, what colour was that? This one is the Sunset, so I've got to work these ones up as well. This is the Sunset 096. Can you see how these are trying to get into the middle? These little bits here, this one here. What I do is I just push them. So that they disappear. Hopefully you saw that. Sorry if I went out of the camera. They just disappear by pushing them over. I don't know if that makes any difference, but I just wonder if maybe those loops would completely come over and then make a mess. So that's why I do that. So that's the bottom side. You can see it's reasonably flat, apart from that bit there. And then the top side is kind of rounded, like a dome, more dome shaped. So I'm just getting rid of that outside piece. And you'll see too, if you've got hand dyed yarn, there are bits that aren't dyed, which is where they've used it to tie up the yarn. The dye hasn't gone in there. So you may want to cut those bits off. Depends what you're making. You may not see it. So I just poke those in. Sometimes I leave a little thing sticking out. Sometimes I don't. So that's done. I hope that taught you a couple of things or a couple of tips that maybe you didn't know or maybe you were having the problems I was talking about and you're, you couldn't figure out why. Don't worry, it's taken me many skeins of yarn to figure out what was happening. Sometimes this little monkey can absolutely make a really horrible cake of yarn. If you're not doing it right, if you don't keep constant tension, yeah, you're in for all sorts of dramas. But it's... <laughs> Not, in saying that, it's not hard to use. You just need tension, just like everything else that we pretty much do with our yarn. You need a bit of tension. So yeah, I love this. When you've wound it off your skein winder, if it's really tight, because you'll, you'll have tension coming from your skein winder across, you could have a lot of tension, just naturally from the, the skein of yarn. You may need to rewind that. You don't want your skeins really tight. See how there's sort of air and it's squishy. You want it squishy. You don't want it rock hard. If it's rock hard, do it again. 
It's really easy because you can just start from the middle or the outside and it'll wind up pretty quick. So thanks for watching guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Let me know if you've got a skein winder or if you have to do it on the back of the chair. I've done that many times as well before I bought my skein winder. If you would like a skein winder, I'll also leave some links below so that you can go and check them out. You can, you can buy quite cheap ones on eBay. I've had one of those. It didn't last very long. It lasted maybe six months. So it can be worth investing into the skein winder. The, the ball winders are a reasonable prices. I think I got this one cheap. It was like 10 or $15 on eBay. So you can be lucky, but they aren't that expensive. You can get some cheap ones. And, and it was second hand, so someone's had it and didn't use it anymore. So that's all good. Yep, so I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, happy crochet. So pretty. What do you do with all those little bits of yarn that you have left over? These could just be ends from when you're sewing your projects or in my case they're just the bits that tied up the skeins of yarn. What do you do with yours? Put your ideas or what you do in the comment section below.